Hey guys, it's Arenthio here again. This is a small departure from my usual content, but don't worry. Your usual videos will come soon. Think of it as a little bonus video. Anyways, I'll be guiding you on how exactly to play Waterloo at home. If you're playing Waterloo, you probably have played Blood and Iron or Strasbourg. Some things are standard, but the things that aren't kind of has a steeper learning curve. And, you know, we'll start with the basics and then move on to more complex strategies. When you first log into the game, you may notice all of these buttons on the bottom right and in the middle. And before you spawn, make sure you press classes or you won't spawn with any items. You'll be given this menu, but as a beginner, I would recommend choosing these four classes since they're pretty straightforward. These other three are a little harder to grasp, so I'll explain how to play them later in the video. But anyways, let's start with Ranker, since that's probably the easiest class to understand. When you first enter the game, you may notice these two bars on the bottom left corner. The bar at the top should be pretty self-explanatory. You die when this goes to zero, but how about morale? How is this bar important? Although you don't die when this goes to zero, if it is empty, you won't be able to fire any of your weapons, and your melee attacks will basically do no damage. Morale will gradually lower over time unless you're around a flag or a spawn point. In that case, it'll regenerate slowly. Alright, now let's continue with the ranker. As you can see here, you have one item in your hotbar. Its range is pretty good and can realistically shoot at about the length of this bridge. First of all, you press F to aim your musket. Then you left click to aim at whatever you're trying to shoot at. Then you left click again to fire. You'll have to reload every time you shoot, so in order to do this, you press R, and this takes about 10 seconds. If you are in an actual battle, just make sure you have cover, since you're gonna be a lot slower and an easier target. Now that we're done firing the weapon, you may be asking, where's my melee weapon? I only have one item. The musket can be turned into a melee weapon by pressing X. And as you can see, there's a notch on my cursor. And based on where you move your cursor, your notch will basically move in the direction that you're going to swing your bayonet. And this can also be done with blocking when you're right-clicking instead of left-clicking. Although I haven't really seen many people use this. The sharpshooter is quite similar to the ranker, and the main advantage is its range, but that's kind of its only advantage, so I usually don't like to play this class very often. And that's because it literally takes forever just to reload the rifle. And if you thought the reload time for the musket was bad, you'd probably be able to shoot a musket twice with the time that you would need to reload a rifle. And since a rifle doesn't have a bayonet, you have a separate sword, which I personally think is better than having a bayonet on your gun, since it takes a millisecond to switch from your melee slash firing mode, since you know every millisecond counts in a battle. So unless you're super accurate, I would recommend against playing a sharpshooter. The Grenadier has three items in its inventory. It has a grenade, a carbine, and a briquette, with the carbine being the primary ranged weapon and the briquette being the melee weapon. The carbine is like the musket we mentioned earlier, but it doesn't have a bayonet, and its range is quite low. It's better than a pistol, but it's worse than a musket. The Grenadier's melee weapon, the briquette, isn't great either. Remember the sword from earlier? It's substantially longer, so it has further reach than the briquette, so it will be more accurate. On the other hand, the briquette is a lot shorter, so you're going to be missing a lot more with the briquette unless you get a lot closer. Since its melee and ranged weapons are worse than the ranker, what's the point in using the grenadier? Is the grenade worth it? I would say if you're fighting a large siege battle or a large defensive battle with a lot of people on both sides, it would be worth it. Not so much in any other situation. It's a class that's only really good in certain situations, although you can rack up a lot of kills with grenades. Moving on, Cavalry has two items in its hotbar, the Cav Sword and the Horse. As far as stats go, the Cav Sword is probably the best melee weapon in the game. But again, that's the only weapon you have, so as far as sieges go, you're useless. But Cavalry is probably the most annoying class to fight in open battle. They're simultaneously extremely hard to hit, but at the same time very easy to hit. When you're moving around, everyone's probably going to miss if they fire at you. But let's say if you fall into a ditch or a slight incline or run into a wall, you're gonna be a large still target for like 10 seconds since you're gonna have that animation lock preventing you from doing anything else. I usually see new players play cavalry. I used to play cavalry when I first started as well. Alright, moving on, the basic support classes, the flag bearer, the musician, and the medic are pretty similar in their loadout. They all have a pistol and a sword, except the musician who only has a sword. Since you know, you gotta make musicians as useless as possible. When danger reared its ugly head, he bravely turned his tail. Anyways, let's take a look at the flag bearer. As I said earlier, you 
you have the standard pistol and sword, but you also have a flag. Simply equipping a flag when you're in a larger siege battle is probably the most useful thing you can do, since this allows you to become a spawn point. It's really crucial to have at least one of these guys in your zerg, since people on your team are probably going to die multiple times. So your job is basically to stay in the general area of the battle and not dying. Overall, a very useful class, one of my favorites actually. And that's not all either. A radius around your flag also recovers morale, so that's also useful. Loadout isn't bad either. The pistol has bad range, but at the same time, it, you won't really need to have much range in a siege battle. Moving on, the medic is kind of useful, but it really is situational. Although you have a bandage and a medical crate that can heal people, the bandage can only heal other people, and people don't seem to be using the medical crate even if I plop them right in front of their face when they're at half health. But I will say this, they're useful in melee battle. But you may be asking, why not all battles? And that's because all gunpowder weapons are an instant KO. Like, it doesn't matter if you're using a pistol or a carbine or a rifle. They're all instant KOs, and you're not going to be able to heal a dead body. So yeah, I would say it's most useful in, I guess, a zerg melee. Otherwise not as useful, since the medic only has a briquette rather than a sword, but it at least has a pistol. To be completely honest, I would say the musician is just the worst version of the flag bearer. Like you have a boogle, a bagpipe, a drum, a fife, which all do the same thing, which increases morale of everyone around you really quickly, but it just takes a little too long to select your song. And although you do have a good melee weapon, you just don't have any ranged weapons, so I guess the best use for a musician is if you're role-playing or if you're trying to take a picture in formation or something like that. Otherwise, playing as a musician it just isn't practical, at least in the current game. Since the flag bearer already has a radius that increases morale. I guess now looking at the more complex classes, we can start with captain, since that's probably the easiest one to understand. The captain has a standard pistol and sword, but also has a compass, spyglass, and a ship tool. In order to spawn your ship, you can spawn it in by equipping the ship tool and clicking on the ship icon. And you can press Q and E so you can rotate it so it's green rather than red so you can actually place it down. I place the ship a little too far, so I'm taking damage by swimming to it. And in order to drive it, you just need to step on the brown box that's right next to the wheel. The ships are really fragile, and they won't really stand up well against actual cannons, so they're probably best fighting other ships. And if you want to fire a cannon, just go up to a cannon and you click the nub at the end of it. Beyond that, there is no need to reload them, they reload automatically after a few seconds. The ships themselves kind of act like flags, but at the same time, the only downside to them is that they're kind of fragile. You can respawn on the ships, I just reset my character to show you that. You can respawn on your own ships, so can anyone else, so you can use this as a sort of invasion platform. Just look out for any cannons or other ships nearby, since it literally just takes like 4 hits from a cannon just for a ship to sink. Again, it's a standard pistol sword setup. The sword is quite nice, but the pistol is, I guess, mediocre as far as a ranged weapon is concerned. It's still sort of situational, since you kind of need to be near a coastline or near an island for the ship to even matter. Otherwise the sword and pistol setup isn't that great on its own. Moving on, let's talk about my favorite class, the Sapper. And as you can see here, we're given five items. The hammer, the shovel, the delete tool, the axe, and the pistol. We already know what the pistol is, so let's take a look at what the shovel does. As you can see here, when you left click on the ground, it creates a little indent. You can continue left clicking until you dig a trench or maybe even build a tunnel. And if you run out of energy, don't worry, it regenerates over time. And again, we'll be revisiting the shovel pretty soon later in the video. Next, let's take a look at the hammer. And as you can see here, a menu pops up. And you may have noticed how much material you have. You start with 200 by default. But when we hover over Watchtower, for instance, it says it costs 25 material and does not require a fort nearby to be built. Pretty much anything that isn't made of stone or is a gunpowder weapon should be something that can be built without a friendly fort nearby. And if you want to build anything else, you're going to have to place down a flag, which is the quote-unquote fort. It's under buildings, and it costs 35 materials. And let's try placing down a cannon, since that requires a fort nearby to be placed down. And there you go! It works! And you can delete the items that you have placed with the delete tool that we mentioned earlier. And the same thing goes with stone walls and things of that sort. But what do you do when you run out of materials? That's where the axe comes into play. As you can see here in the menu, it says we have 30 materials. But if we pull out our axe and chop the tree a few times, you will notice that now we have 52. 
And the axe as a melee weapon isn't actually that bad. I'd say it's better than a briquette, but it's worse than an actual sword. Since although it is as long as a sword, it only seems to do damage when the actual axe head hits the enemy. I haven't even scratched the surface of the strategies that you can use as a sapper, but I guess that's for another video. The artillery class has six items in its inventory. It has a worm, a swab, a bucket, a slow match, a compass, and a spyglass. Pretty much everything there is used to reload artillery pieces, except probably the spyglass and the compass, which are both used to aim artillery, though I don't really use them much. I guess we can start with the regular old cannon, since that's probably the easiest one to load. I've already fired the cannon, so I'm using the swab to clean it out before I use it again. And this time I'll use the canister shot. This is usually used to wipe out entire groups of people that are close to your base. Then you equip the canister shot, or a round shot, or whatever you're using. Then you jam it down the barrel with a swab like we just did before. This takes a little while, so a little bit of patience is good. And now we're ready to fire the cannon. Just left click on the back end of the barrel of the cannon. And if you want to actually look down the barrel, press C, and when you're ready to fire, press F. And there you go, it's just like a shotgun. And this is the same thing with a round shot. This is better for destroying buildings. Howitzers have one more step that you need to use, using your worm. And this time I'll use a round shot, since it has a fuse, since it explodes on impact. And again, you use a swab like we did with the regular cannon. And again, a little bit of patience is helpful. And now that we're done loading in the cannonball, we're ready to fire. You click on the back of the barrel and press F like we did with the regular cannon, again. But I guess the difference between the howitzer and the regular cannon as far as reloading is concerned is that you have to use your worm. First of all, you get the worm out and you click the front of the cannon. Then you get your swab out and do the same exact thing like we did with the regular cannon. Then you can pretty much repeat the process. This is the howitzer with the canister shot instead of the round shot. Now let me show you how to use the rocket. This personally is my favorite artillery piece to fire. And we'll be using the explosive rocket, which is my favorite as well. You just have to click the top end of this rack thing with your rocket. There are two slots, so you can do it twice. And to actually aim the thing, you have to press the bottom end of the rack. And to actually fire the thing, you have to get your slow match out and click the bottom ends of the rockets. And it's pretty satisfying to watch the rockets explode as they hit their targets. The Gatling gun in Waterloo at home doesn't exactly live up to the hype, but it's quite quick and easy to reload. That's one of its main advantages. As you can see here, all I have to do is click the top nub of the Gatling gun with your magazine, and there you go. And you can pitch it however you'd like, like any other artillery piece. And you're able to look down the barrel by pressing C, and you can hold down F to continue fire the Gatling gun. Not as fast as I imagined, but it is the Napoleonic era after all. It's more like a puckle gun than an actual Gatling gun. And don't forget to remove the magazine, since you're not going to be able to put in a new one once you use up the old one. Another thing that's also relevant is that the swab can also be used as a melee weapon. You press X to switch to melee mode like you did with the musket, but as you can see here, there is no notch. I guess its main advantage is that it has very long reach, but then again, you can't maneuver it since it doesn't have a notch, as I said earlier, plus it doesn't do much damage. So how it compares to other weapons really is debatable. Anyways, I've looked at all the classes that exist as of now. If you have any questions, just comment down below and I'll pretty much respond to every one of them. But if you think a single response isn't enough, you're welcome to join my Discord server. I respond pretty quickly in most situations, and if you have a more complex question, maybe we can have a VC. Again, up to you. And if you guys like this kind of content, maybe I'll make more of it. And again, thanks for watching. See you later.